Well hello and welcome to my latest video and we are in, yes, wait for it, French France and we're riding along the Avenue Verte. See if you can work out why it's called the Avenue Verte. In front of me, my mate Mike, we spent a very pleasant few days cycling through France and now we are on our way home. Back to the old country, Blighty, Angleterre, arsehole of the universe, also known as. And we're heading from Forge les eaux to Dieppe, there to catch the ferry if we avoid these French ramblers. Bonjour! Bonjour. One thing we have to do is say bonjour everybody we pass and the French are very sociable very friendly people very nice people very friendly people very sociable people but very private people one of the things I've noticed is practically every house has really big solid iron steel other metals are available gates across the front of their property to keep out who knows what. Just the bike. Go like he can. More scenes of the Avenue Vert. Now there's one thing you probably have to say about the Avenue Vert is it's pretty much the same. So, if you've watched this bit of the video, you possibly don't need to watch the rest. Except, if you miss the rest, you will also miss the commentary. Do you want to miss the commentary? Of course you don't. Do you want to see the wahoo? There is the wahoo. There is the top peak. Handlebar bag. And that uh, rather funny flesh coloured thing with waving is in fact my left hand in case you were curious up ahead still is my mate Mike I'm gonna put the hammer down now see if I can catch him catch him Derry catch him Derry there's a certain video on YouTube you would have to have seen to understand what I just said there Every now and again you come to these junctions and the cars, being French cars, stop for cyclists which, I mean, I've weighed these one wrong because I'm taking this video but they stop for cyclists because they are nice people and they understand the importance of cycling unlike in a certain country that we know too well. If you're thinking of doing the Avenue Vert, by the way, yeah, I'll talk to the camera. If you're thinking of doing the Avenue Vert, I can highly recommend it. Uh, drive, get the train, or indeed cycle uh, to New Haven. This is in you in the United Kingdom, of course. If you're coming from other countries, you'll have to work it out for yourself. Anyway, go to New Haven on the south coast of the United Kingdom. Uh, catch the ferry to Dieppe, takes about four and a half hours, nice ferry. Uh, get off the other side, well, good idea to get off the other side, and uh, get on your bike, join the Avenue Vert, pretty easy to find, and you can get GPX routes or you can get paper maps if that is your bag. Uh, my mate Mark swears by paper maps, uh, paper maps, paper maps, uh, but do either and uh, start cycling and prepare to enjoy yourself do as I do or rather do as I did stuff yourself with croissant, pain au chocolat, a crepe, nutella, steak, fruit, a beer 
if that is your bag. Uh, Coke Zero for me, thank you very much. Uh, lager for Finchie. And uh, prepare to enjoy yourself on fine cycle paths without being assailed by BMWs, Mercedes, VW Golfs, Range Rovers, other car makes are available, who are desperately trying to force you into a ditch or lean out of the window and call you a cunt. Doesn't happen in France. No, it doesn't happen to Picasso anyway. Not in New York. You have to be a fan of the modern lovers to understand that reference. And if you are a certain age, you are almost certainly a fan of the modern lovers. And so we've reached Menier en Bray, uh, which is a site of a rather beautiful chateau, which actually, oh, I can see why they've done this. Can you see why they've done this? They've done this kind of frame so that you can frame the chateau in the background. Isn't that amazing? I didn't even realise. Well, with a bit of a sneaking around, we managed to find an entrance to the Chateau de Meniere, and so we've come inside to have a look at it. There's a lot of uh, kind of students wandering around with bits of paper in their hands, doing a kind of, I don't know, some kind of Duke of Edinburgh scheme, or perhaps they're looking for hidden clues. You can see Mike there, just on the right hand side by the bicycles. I was saying to Mike that the difference between the English Civil War and the French Revolution is that the French Revolution wasn't actually a civil war, and therefore the castles uh, were not used as fortresses by one side or the other, and were therefore not destroyed. And of course, because it happened some, what, 150 years later than the English Civil War, uh, they wouldn't really have been much good at fort as fortresses because they would have soon have been knocked down, which is why I suppose French castles are much better preserved. And also, I mean, these aren't medieval castles, I wouldn't have thought. These are uh, much later, perhaps 18th century, something like that. And that's why they're in a much better state of repair. Of course, the French, unlike the British, uh, managed to dispose of all of their aristocracy, something which, as many of you know, I am still keen to achieve in the old country. Nice, isn't it? Very nice. You haven't tried to go inside. I think it's open, but, you know, TED Talks, marriages, um, civil partnership dissolutions, divorces, that kind of thing. Any civil ceremony undertaken. Deaths, births, circumcisions. Is that a civil ceremony? Not sure. Worth a look. Not, well, not worth a look, but you know what I mean. There's a man there with a ladder. I wonder where he's going. Rapunzel, let down your hair. Going to need a bigger ladder. Going to need a bigger boat. More kids. See, they've got bits of paper. You probably can't see. Left many air behind. And we've left the Avenue Vert behind. And... Mike, who's in charge of route planning, said, right, we're getting off the Avenue Bird and we're going to take this road, which is climbing over the hill and then down the other side. Now I said, right, why can't we stay on the Avenue Bird, which is flat? And Mike said, I'm in charge of route planning. So, I emailed the International Court of Strava Route Arbitration and said, can you step in here? And they wrote back and said, don't be such a fucking baby, ride the route, get over the climb. It's a hill, get over it, they said, as if they were the first person to ever think of that saying when in fact it was my great grandfather. Anyway, that's where we're going. Over the hill and far away. Well, over the hill to Dieppe anyway. Nice, isn't it? 
quiet. Sky is blue. Sun is out. Not a cloud to spoil the view. But it's raining. Oh, hang on, I can't sing that, otherwise I'll get a copyright strike from YouTube. Mind you, YouTube would have to recognise that as a song. I'm not sure that the YouTube algorithms are up to that. Oh, do you remember when Nadine Doris says, when is YouTube going to get rid of all those algorithms? <laughs> what a numpty. Now this, that you can see here, is a gravel farm. And what they have in France is these kind of gravel farms where they grow acres and acres and acres of gravel. And then these big trucks and these big diggers come along scoop up the gravel and create the gravel roots because as we all know gravel is the future of cycling so you saw it here first a gravel farm well we climbed up the hill which uh, actually was quite tough I was gonna I was gonna film while climbing up the hill but uh, I was a bit too knackered anyway we've carried on coming into this forest and this is the site of uh, uh, Hitler ordered the construction of 400 launch sites for uh, V1 rockets uh, along this, uh, in this part of France and this was one of the sites that was constructed uh, but as soon as it was constructed it was bombed and destroyed by the Allies which of course is a wonderful achievement uh, and so this site never actually functioned and is now here as a kind of memorial. Very interesting. So, again, you know, the thing I always go on about, and I, and I do kind of go on about it, I know I go on about a lot of things, but one of the things I always go on about, just wait for that car to pass, is serendipity, which, as you know, is the notion of a happy accident. And this it's fairly obscene there isn't it anyway this stumbling across this site is let that car go past a perfect example of serendipity What an eerie place, isn't it? And apart from Mike and I, and I don't know where Mike is, completely deserted. Well, what a fascinating place. And, you know, I keep on mentioning about serendipity, but to just kind of stumble across this place, not, not knowing it was here, not expecting to finding, not having looked in any guidebook, just stumbling across, completely deserted, bombed, German rocket site. Amazing. So glad I came on this trip. Really had a good time. And here, well here is the model, at least I hope it's a model, of uh, an actual V2 rocket uh, and, a, and a kind of catapult system um, that was used to launch the rocket and that uh, rather phallic looking object I showed you before there's another one here I'll show you it again just there is the equivalent weight of the rocket and was used to test whether the catapult was working properly
and here is the beautiful French countryside in which they located this horrible machine. Of course this one was destroyed but many others were operational and launched uh, many thousands of rockets towards Britain which of course killed many thousands of people. This is a quiche Lorraine, which I'm about to eat. And the reason it's called Lorraine is because Lorraine was the name of the first bakeress to actually make one of these quiche tarts, as they're known. Mm, cool. That is delicious. I bet you wish you had some. Oh. Take a bite, go on. I do. Take a bite. Too late, you missed it. So we've been bombing along this fairly straight road with a really strong headwind heading to Dieppe but wanting to turn off to get back onto the Avenue Vert. Came to this nice looking shop which I thought was a nice cream shop but it isn't really, it's a patisserie. So we bought, uh, bought some cokes and some water, there's Mike there drinking his coke and uh, asked the young lady in the way to the Avenue Vert. Unfortunately her English and my French did not meet somewhere in the middle. So we struggled. So we were sitting outside and a bloke came out, went to his car and then he came back. So I believe you're looking for the Avenue Vert. We said, we are. So she'd obviously in the shop said to him, you see those two old duffers outside? They are totally lost. See if you can help them out, can you? And he came out to uh, help us out. And he did. Now, is that not... Is that that nice of a Frenchman and a young French lady? Kindly looking after two old duffers like Mike and myself. There's Mike walking back to his bike. And now we're going to follow the directions the helpful gentleman gave us and hopefully get back onto the Avenue Vert. Well, we haven't quite found the Avenue Vert yet, but we're on the right road to get to it. The French scenery this is again. Bonjour. 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 Bon. Qu'est-ce que, que vous avez regardé? Sur la caméra. Mmh. Movie. Sur la caméra. Movie. <rire> Comment? Dis ou t'as pas dit Louis? C'est Louis. Ah ouais, je vois Louis. Oui. Ah oh, moi j'avais jamais vu qu'il y avait il y a longtemps qu'il y a le cas. Just with Brad Pitt. Vous Brad êtes? Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Oh. Ah bon Brad Pitt Je ne m'entends pas Dieu. Nous, notre époque, c'est Johnny Hallyday, nous. J'adore les mots à petit gars. Brad Pitt, vous voyez, bah c'est ça. Et puis vous 
Moi Oui. Euh, Robert oui. Redford. Comment Robert Redford. Paul Newman. Je ne le connais pas. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Newman c'est ça. Ah oui. Paul Newman. Oui. Voilà, voilà. <rire> c'est la bicyclette. D'accord, d'accord. Ah ben. Dis donc, on a trop on a trop vu du vedette. Dis donc, c'est pas si bon. Right, that short, right, which all the top cycling YouTubers do, and which I struggle to do, was nearly spoiled by these two bloody old ladies. They were like, what are you doing? I said, we're making a movie. Do what? I'm making a movie. She said, can't believe it. And, and she got up really close to the GoPro. Not on your side, not on the lens side on like the viewing side. So you might have heard her, but you wouldn't have seen her. Because she didn't believe that it was really a camera. Bonjour. Like those two. They were thinking, what is that old duffer doing? Anyway, we are almost coming to the end of this cycling vlog as we arrive almost in the end. Here's another one of those gates. Which I have to... Which I have to stop at. There's a cafe here. Some cyclists. More cyclists, frankly, than we've seen on the whole of this six day trip. Bonjour. Bonjour. I'm looking forward, I must say, to getting back to Blighty. So I can stop saying bonjour all the time. There's two more cyclists. A bloody Piccadilly Circus. And now we're basically just walking up this drag. Look at that Burton of London. Ah, Sir Philip Green. I've tracked you down. We've found him hiding in Dieppe. Yeah, we're basically walking up this street, main street, I suppose, of Dieppe. A little bit... Mm, is it fair to say... Daggy? Or is that, is that a bit francophobe? I don't think it's francophobe. It's, I suppose it's all right, really. It's a bit like, you know, a main street in, I don't know, Canterbury, Oxford, York, Bromley, Eastbourne. Um, probably more cafe culture, I suppose. Same amount of dogs, same amount of mm, shops that I suppose have seen better days, more cafes, more people speaking French, I suppose. All these things one shouldn't be too surprised about. Not quite sure where we're going, I have a feeling Mike might have his eye on a cheese shop. Will he get there? And they say, Pardon, monsieur, pas de fromage. That means not cheese. You have to speak a certain age to understand the meaning of that cheese reference. Or, are you a fan of the popular big combo? known as Monty Python's Flying Circus. Mike says this cafe is famous, but he's not sure what for. Perhaps lots of famous people have been here. Is that possible? I suppose it's possible. We've not been here. Well, we've been here, but we've not stopped. This is the Café des Tribunaux. I'm not sure what that means. 
We're on the quay, waiting, waiting to board the ship. They've put us in a line with these motorcyclists. They all look a bit mufty tufty to me. But they're not going to fight us. We've finally seen Emerson Lake and Palmer, who we saw on the ferry coming out. Oh, you will notice, if you're observant, that Palmer is missing. He left the band due to musical differences. As in real life, I believe. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much the end of today's video. The end of our grand tour de France. So, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you like my videos, please like my videos, subscribe, tell your friends, hit the notification bell, and remember that my channel raises money for www.dec.org.uk for humanitarian relief for Ukraine. So, this is Monsieur Julian Hutchins signing off and saying, see you next time.